Thank you. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Happy Sabbath to each and every one of you. And welcome again to our Joliet Seventh-day Adventist Church, where we worship God in joy and symphony, right? At this time, we will start our song service. So please join us in singing with all your heart praises unto our Lord. And we will start with the first hymn, 483, I Need Thee Every Hour. Uh, oh, okay. I guess we will need the um, to turn to your hymnals because it's not working. Our, we're having technical difficulties. And they weren't able to get it fixed this morning, so we'll wait till you get there. Our number is 483. 483, I need thee every hour. I need thee every hour, my precious Lord. When the husband died, when the days afford, I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to Thee. I need Thee every hour, stay down nearby. Temptation lose their power when Thou art nigh. I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. I need thee every hour, in joy or pain. I'll quickly and abide, or life is vain. I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me, Lord, my Savior, I come to thee. I need thee every hour, teach me thy will, and thy riches is mine, as will he fulfill. Need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to Thee. Amen. Our next song is 537, He Leadeth Me. And that's what we need Him for, to lead us. To lead us in path of plenty and to lead us right to the promised land. He leadeth me, O oh, blessed thought, O oh, words with heaven we comfort from. Whate'er I do, where'er I be, still tis God's hands that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hands he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be, 
for by his hands he leadeth me. Come times mid scenes of deepest gloom, sometimes where Eden's bowers bloom. By water still or troubled sea, still tis his hands that lead at me. He lead at me, he lead at me, by his own hands he lead at me. His faithful follower I would be, for by his hands he lead at me. Lord, I would clasp my hands in thine, nor ever murmur, nor repine. Contented never lot I see, since tis my God that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hands he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be, for by his hands he leadeth me. And when my task on earth is done, by thy grace I want your very one. In that cold waves I will not flee, since God through Jordan lead at me. He lead at me, he lead at me, by his own hands he lead at me. His faithful follower I would be, for by his hands he lead at me. Amen. Amen. Our next song is uh, 547, Be Thou My Vision. 547. <clears throat> He will be, it's through his division that he will give us, that he leads us, leads us through his vision. Right. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best heart, by day or by night. Walking or sleeping, thy presence my light. Be thou my wisdom, be thou my true word. I ever with thee, and thou with me, Lord. Thou my great Father, my loving true Son. Thou in me dwelling, and I with Thee one. Riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise. Thou my inheritance, now and always. 
Thou my then only first in my heart. High King of heaven, my treasure thou art. King, King of heaven, when victory is won, may I reach heaven's joy, joy O oh, son. Heart of mine own heart, whatever befalls, still be my vision, O ruler of all. Amen. Shall we stand as we have our call to worship? I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King. What you hear may be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Precious Lord, dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for many blessings that you have poured upon us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that we came to your house to praise you, to worship you, and to receive our blessings that you prepared from above. Yeah. Lord, now as we hear your word, May you send the Holy Spirit, open our minds, our hearts, so that we can see you in this beautiful day. Lord, we thank you again for your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us and gave us eternal life through his blood. Heavenly Father, may you also put the Holy Spirit to remind us every time that Jesus loves us so much and we need to love him also. In Jesus' name, Amen. Touch me and me. 
Morning, church. God's blessing upon you all. Uh, Rhonda would like to say a word about our blood drive first. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. So I just wanted to remind everyone we are having a blood drive coming up on Wednesday. July 26th from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. It's going to be down in the gymnasium. And um, you can make an appointment um, by going on the church Facebook page. There is, um, there is a link as well as a QR code. You can also sign up on the bulletin board out in the hallway. Um, in case you aren't on Facebook, there is a list. You can sign up there or you can see me. I'll be happy to help you with that. Um, please share this information with your family, friends, neighbors, co-workers, so we can get the word out to have a success, successful drive. Um, I did want to thank Sister Kate Millar. She came up here the last couple of Sabbaths and um, shared information about her blood drive, but she also shared a personal story about needing a blood transfusion herself. So I praise God that she was able to get that blood transfusion that she needed. Amen. So I'm just going to share a few facts about blood. Um, these are on the Versity website. Um, there's 56, but I'm not going to list them all. I'm just going to just a few. Um, red blood cells carry oxygen to the body's organs and tissues. The average adult body contains 10 pints of blood, but a newborn baby has about one cup of blood in their little body. Um, I like this one. I didn't know this. Donating blood burns 650 calories. Oh, that was interesting. The easiest way to discover your blood type is to donate blood. You cannot get HIV, AIDS, or any other infectious, infectious disease by donating blood. Um, more than 4.5 million patients would die each year without life-saving blood transfusions in the United States and Canada. The process for whole blood donation usually takes one hour. That's like signing in, answering the questions, they do a little physical. Um, but the blood collection itself is usually about 10 minutes. Every blood donation goes through 14 rigorous tests to ensure a safe blood supply. Shortages of all blood types most often occur during summer and winter months. There is no substitute for human blood. And lastly, about 37 out of every 100 Americans are eligible to donate blood, but only three to four people donate each year. So anyway, um, you can mark it on your calendar. And like I said, share with, um, and I understand if everyone can't donate, but share with your friends, family, and hope to see you on July 26th. Thank you. Thank you for that reminder, Ramna. So, without blood, we don't survive. We don't stand a chance. Thank God for his mercy. Welcome. If we have visitors, some for the first time, if we welcome you. And we pray that we'll, it's my prayer that we'll all enjoy this time together as we fellowship together. May the Lord continue to guide and direct us through this day. And I pray that we just enjoy each other's company while we fellowship together. Today's offering is 
for our local church budget. I used to hear Brother Dukes, uh, God rest his soul, say a lot. He said, we can't outgive God. We can never outgive God, never. No matter what we give, how much we give, we can outgive God. This idea is that when you give something to God, he gives you more than you gave him. But does it work? If you give God a dollar, a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, will you get back more than what you gave God? For some of us, just paying our bills is a great accomplishment. Others have extra prioritized investment in a retirement account, real estate, or the stock market, hoping they will get back more than what they put into their investment. Often it works, although sometimes it doesn't. Can we outgive God? Remember, Whatever we give actually to come back to us from God, the original giver. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father. God started this by giving us something to give, like an older person giving a child something to put in the offering plate. When Jesus told the parable of the talents, it seemed clear that he expected us to take what he gave us and put it to use, to yield even more than he gave. When those recipients gave an account of what their master had given them, commendation went to those who invested and the master gave them even more. So today I invite you to take what God has given you and give it to him, give it back to him. A little bit, not all, but just give him a portion. Then let him give you more, whether that's money, opportunity, talents, love, or life. Amen, amen, amen. With the uh, ashes, please stand. So we can offer prayer for God's mercy. Oh, dear Lord, we come to you once again, Lord, with humble hearts. Praising you for your mercy, you continue to bestow upon us, keeping us safe through the night and allowing us to come out today and to fellowship together and enjoy each other's company and worship and praise and glorify you. Now bless us through this day, Lord. Bless this offering in these times as we return a portion back to you. Have mercy upon the giver and the one that don't have anything to give. Bless them also. And I pray that whatever we give back, that you use this money, Lord, to in places that are most pleasing to you. Is my prayer in Christ's name. Amen.
Morning, boys and girls. I'm going to tell you a story about an auto accident. A British newspaper ran a headline, an accident victim thrown 15 feet through the air when a car overturned on the highway is swimming again normally. What does that mean? Percy, a four-year-old goldfish, flew out of the fish tank and was hurled clear of the car following the accident in Lichtenshire, Britain. Police who arrived at the accident found, um, found in the middle of the car dripping wet and littered with colored gravel. As paramedics treated Sophie, the driver, for neck and arm injuries, officers looked up and down the highway for the other victim of the crash, a goldfish. <coughs> officers discovered the fish tank lying empty in the car. Obviously, the tank had been overturned in the collision. Realizing that people don't usually transport fish, in a full tank of water unless there is a fish in it. <coughs> Searched the car, but they couldn't find the fish. Shortly afterward, officers sweeping up the glass from the roadway found a small goldfish in the middle of lane three, about 15 feet from where the car had landed. They didn't think the goldfish could survive the 15 minutes out of water, but they took it to the ambulance crew anyway. And when the paramedics put Percy in some water, the goldfish immediately started swimming. Yay! Those officers were kind-hearted. They didn't need to look for the mere goldfish, but they did. Sophie must have been happy and surprised that he survived. Jesus told a parable of a woman who had 10 coins and lost one of them. She searched and she searched and searched until she found it. The story was really how Jesus feels when one of us is lost and away from him. He will never give up until he finds us. Amen. Would one of you like to pray? No one? I love you, Lord, and make sure you are the best Lord ever, and you are, make sure you're always heavenly um, and not die because you're the best Jesus in the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Blessing. Number five, thank you for the evening. Make sure everyone is safe that they don't get serious. This is my main man. Okay, get your baskets.
Thank you, Deborah. Now for our special music. Tabitha, Tabitha and Deborah is gonna bring us our special music. I have a maker, he calms my heart, before even time began, my life was in his hands. <laughs> Isn't it a beautiful day today? Amen. Our scripture reading is from Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 5 and 6. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I do cannot cannot I do with you as this potter? saith the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine in mine hand, O house of Israel. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. This week, we'll, we will be praying for James and Sharon Mason, and I also have a prayer request. It is from Jean, and it says, My friend, uh, please pray for my friend, D, who fell down the stairs and fractured her lower back and also suffered a brain bleed. She is in intensive care at Silver Cross. Uh, if you guys are able, able to, kneel with me and pray. Father, we ask that James and Sharon Mason, that you put your hands over them and that you know whatever issues they may have going on with their life, whatever troubles, whatever temptations that Satan may be, may be throwing, throwing at them, we ask that you help them with that. And most importantly, we pray for, for Jean's friend, Dee. We ask that as she's in... As she's at, in the hospital, um, that the nurses and the doctors, that that you will show them exactly what what she needs done, and 
and that her body will be able to recover quickly. And thank you for bringing us all safely here today. Thank you that you have cared for each one of us um, from the time that we were born, even from before that until now. We thank, we thank you for all that you've done for us. And we ask that you touch the lips of our speaker today that, that we may understand the, the message that you would like to show us today. Thank you for all that you've done for us. In your name I pray, amen. Sabbath. Uh, we thank God. As Sammy said, it's uh, a beautiful day, isn't it? Huh? We thank God for the rain. And then, uh, now the grass are green. Uh, and we thank God for the freedom that we have to come and worship in his house. Uh, if we have visitors, you are welcome and feel at home because this house belongs to God. And God is our Father. Today, I wanted to talk to you about the potter. You know, uh, <clears throat> before this, uh, you know, the science became advanced, most household were using vessels from clay. And I believe still one of the best material is clay in terms of health. Uh, maybe the only weakness is you need to handle it nicely, otherwise it's very fragile. So to make uh, a clay pot is a long process. First, you need to find the clay. Any kind of soil will not work. You can't use any soil. It's a special soil is there. Then you need to dig and bring it. After that, you know, the potter will sieve the soil to get the, the finest one. Then after that, it will mix it with water. Then he will put it on a wheel and start making and shaping as he wanted. After that, he will leave it to dry. After it got dry, he will put it in fire again. Maybe burning it, heating it, so that it will be strong. Then some people or some potters, they just put paint. Others, they leave it as it is. So, uh, in our Bible, we'll find metaphor about clay. But I wanted to show you different vessels made of uh, clay. If the slide is there, you... Okay, you see, this is the first...
when we come to uh, our Bible, let's open 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 and 21. I want us to start from the, the New Testament and then uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 and 21. It's, it reads, but in great houses, there are no only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleans himself from the letter, he will be a vessel for honor sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. So in every great house, it's not only silver and gold, clay also still there. But there are two things here. One, it might be for the purpose of honoring that item or dishonor the vessel. Our Bible on verse 21 underlines it is depending on the vessel. It says, verse 21, if anyone cleanses himself, so it's our choice. It's the choice. But to clean himself, that's number one. Number two, sanctify himself. And then prepare for good work. What is this good work? There are many lists that we can, we can put. But it can be rounded in one word. That is love. When we talk of love, God is love. And then if we see, we can divide this love into two. One, we need to love our creator, our God. And then the other one, we need to love our neighbors. So this will take us to the commandments that God has given us. So everything goes around this commandment. Whatever we sanctify, we prepare. Finally, it is the useful, it will be useful for the master. The master is the potter, our creator who made us. So here some people say. I was not, you know, God doesn't love me because all these terrible things happened to me. If he loved me, I would have been like so and so. No, God loves everybody equally. But we need to sanctify ourselves. We need to cleanse ourselves. And then we need to prepare ourselves for the useful work of the master. The second metaphor from the Bible is restoration. Restoration. I, wanted, I want us to read Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 1 to 6. Here, uh, the prophet Jeremiah was in his house and one morning God's word came to him to go down to the potter's house because there is something that he's supposed to learn in the potter's house. Let's read it from verse 1. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house. And there I will cause you to hear my words. 
Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was making something at the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was murdered in hands of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make. So when he went there, the potter was doing his job. But something strange happened. While he was working on the potter, it murdered. Maybe it cracked, or maybe it is not holding together, or it is bent. Something defect happened. Did he throw it away? No. Then he took it again and made it in a different vessel because it was on the potter's hand. What about you buy a clay vessel, whatever it is? You bring it home. If it cracks or breaks, what do you do? Garbage it. That's it. You don't care about it. You'll buy another one. But the potter, the potter doesn't do that. He will take it and work on it again. That's the difference. If we remain in the potter's hand, he's always ready to work on us. The problem, if we leave the potter and we go somewhere else and we break, that's it. That's why we need to remain in the potter's hand all the time. Last week, summer school, as we study, you know, something came. It says like, Sometimes we feel our sin is beyond the blood of Jesus Christ. We think that way, but that's wrong. God's grace is sufficient. He will cover everything. So we shouldn't give up. We need to remain in the porter's hand all the time. You know, uh, I wanted to see one story in the Bible from uh, First Chronicles chapter 21. It will tell us what is going on in the potter's hand. In uh, First Chronicles chapter 21, verse 1, it says, Now Satan stood up against Israel, and moved David to number Israel. You see here? The devil stood up against Israel. Then he targeted who? The king. To count Israel. The the problem, you know, the devil doesn't sleep, always would like to tempt. So as sitting and thinking, how do I destroy Israel? He said, let me hit the head, then it will be easy. So he went to the king and then he put this idea to count the army. In fact, what David was wanted was uh, to count the army, how many he has, like strong people. If you, uh, if you read the previous chapters, like from chapter 15 all the way up to chapter 21, David was conquering many nations, Palestines, Syrian, 
all the neighbors, they were under him. He got this power from God, not from his army. God's army was before him. And then the purpose of this census was to know like, how many strong army do I have? I need to conquer more. I need to have, you know, more territory. That was the problem. But when you read uh, Patriarch and Prophet, uh, the last chapter, uh, page 746, it was pride and ambition who drove David to count army. There was nothing wrong for the census. You know, Joshua has done that, but God told him to do that. The purpose was different. The act was the same, but the purpose was different. David, he wanted to show how strong he is. He forgot about God, pride and ambition. If you read uh, verse 2, <clears throat> let, let's uh, read verse 3. He told his, his commander-in-chief, Joab, to go out and count, and we can read the answer. And Joab answered, May the Lord make his people a hundred times more than they are. But my Lord, the King, are they not all my Lord's servants? Why then does my Lord require this thing? Why should he be a cause of guilt in Israel? So the general knew about it and he said, Oh, king, please, don't do this. May the Lord add more thousands and thousands for you. Please don't do this. Don't be guilt for Israel. You know why he said that? Job participated in every battle, in every war. He has seen all the victory, but he realized all that victory is not because of his army. Is there is another power that goes before them. The angel of God was going out with them every day. So he realized it's not our army. Yes, we were, we were there. But the Lord also was with us. We shouldn't forget. But David said, no, you need to go out and count. You know, David, for the first time, when he encountered Goliath, he had done the same thing like Joab. King Saul was asking him, this guy has a lot of experience, and look at him. He's very tall, he's a sword, and his armament, everything. Can you fight with him? He didn't say, I can fight with him. He said, when I was a shepherd, there was lion coming and then bear. The Lord protect me from them and I was killing them. So the same God will help me now. That's what David said. But after he became king and then after conquering and having all those territories, he forgot about it completely and trusted for the first time, trusted his army. But Job tried to remind him. He refused. He said, go out. 
the king's word prevailed against Joab. So he went out, started counting. Then after that, he came back and reported. In total, they had about 1.5 million army. But immediately, the king realized what he has done was wrong. He shouldn't trust his army. He's supposed to trust his God. Then God talked to him. When he came to his heart, when he came to his senses, when he came to his, his mind, God talked to him. He sent his prophet. And the prophet gave him three choices. You can read verse 9 to 12. Verse 9 to 12, three choices. The first one, God said, there will be three years famine. If you don't want that, okay. For three months, your enemies will come and you fight with them. And the third one is three days, there will be pestilence. So David was worried. But if I were, if I were uh, David, I would have choose to fight my enemies for three months. You know why? Because he had 1.5 million armies. And he has a lot of experience. But David didn't choose that. You know what he said? Let's read verse 13. Verse 13. And David said to God, that is a prophet, I am in great distress. Please let me fall into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are very great. But do not let me fall into the hand of man. If you allow me to modify and read this verse, David was saying like, let me fall into the hand of the potter. Because he's the one who made me. If I murdered, yes, I have already done, he will make me into a different vessel. But if I fall in the hand of man, that will be the last customer no mercy at all. They will finish him. That's the end of him. So David made a right choice. Imagine, after having such a strong army, after counting and preparing that, still he doesn't want to face his enemies. He doesn't want to go out and fight because he realized all that power came from God. So if he leave aside God, he will not win. So he said, let me fall into your hand. Do whatever you want to do, because I know you are merciful. You will make me again as a different person. But the sad thing in that Three days, my Bible tells me about 70,000 people died because of the pestilence, 70,000. You see, that's why the devil wanted to attack the king. Because he is the head of Israel. All the people were under him. 
So my brothers and sisters, we are responsible first for ourselves. If we are in charge of a church, remember the members are, are belong to us. If you are the head of the household, remember all your family are belong to you. So if the devil starts attacking you, it will attack your family, your marriage, your children. That's what the devil is doing. So David, because he was a king, he's in charge. 70,000 people just died. And the spirit of prophecy was mentioning also the people started forgetting about God. They said, now we are a great nation. And we got this because of our King David. They forgot about God. God was reminding them. But later on, in uh, verse 16 and 17, I want to read that. Verse 16 and 17, how God is merciful. It says, then David lifted his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord standing between the earth and heaven, having in his hand a drawn sword stretched out over Jerusalem. So David and the elders, clothed in sackcloth, fell on their face. And David said to God, to God, was it not I? who commanded the people to be numbered. I am the one who has sinned and done evil indeed. But this sheep, what have they done? Let your hand, I pray, O Lord, may God be against me and my father's house, but not against your people, that they should be played. This is a true repentance. Nothing was happened to David, but he has seen people dying. And he said, why Lord? It was me who committed the sin. Why is this sheep? They are clean. Can you punish me? and my father's house. That's what the Lord wanted, a true repentance. Sometimes, if the whip is not touching us, we don't care. If it is outside, we don't mind until it comes to us. But, David said, no. Brothers and sisters, the world is in trouble now. Are we comfortably sitting or we are praying for the world? We know what is going on in the schools. What is going on around? We need to be concerned. We need to open our eyes. There are many countries, maybe most of us, we don't like watching news because it's stressing, isn't it? But the fact that people didn't get God's word, even worldly items, there is famine, there is pestilence, there is war going on. Children remain without parents. There are many widows around the world. The disease, I think, is, is, is more than it is named now.
That's why we need to donate blood, isn't it? Huh? People are getting sick. Let's pray so that the Lord will visit those people. Even if we can't reach to those people, there is one thing we can pray for them and we can remember them. So David made a real repentance. The good thing, God listened. He heard his prayer in the same place he sacrificed to God and it stopped. That was a very good choice. He remained in the potter's hand. Just in three days, everything was over. Imagine if it was three years famine, how many people would have died and suffered? If it was in the enemy's hand, big disaster would have happened. But he remained in the potter's hand and he made him a different vessel. So brothers and sisters, I urge you today, whatever you do, don't be afraid to remain in the potter's hand. May God bless you. Shall we stand? <laughs> shelter in the time of storm no fear alarm no foes of fright a shelter in the time of storm mighty rock in the weary land when shade on a burning sand will guide on the pilgrim's band, shelter in the time of storm. Raging flood may crown the speed, a shelter in the time of storm. We find in God a safe retreat, a shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock in the weary land, cooling shades, burning sand, faithful guide, pilgrims band, a shelter in the time of storm. Rock. Oh, rage in dread, a shelter in the time of storm. Be thou our helper ever near, a shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock, the weary land, cool and shade on the burning sand. 
faithful guide on the pilgrim's friend, a shelter in the time of storm. Heavenly Father, we thank you because you are a shelter for us in any storm. Heavenly Father, we thank you because you are the potter and we are clay. Even if we go away from you, still we want to remain in your hand, Heavenly Father, so that you will make us again as a different vessel. Lord, as we disperse, may you be with us and keep us safe throughout the new week. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.